we'll start. Welcome, Brianna and David. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I have uh, some questions for you, but students, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and I can ask them on your behalf or you can also unmute yourself and ask the question you have. So with that, um, let's start. David and Brianna. So how did you find out about this career path? So if you could tell a little bit, uh, tell the students a little bit about your current position and um, how you decided to pursue this position. Oh, Brianna, you wanna go first? Yeah, sure. Um, so coming up through high school, um, I really didn't know where I wanted to go in life. Um, I kind of got that usual spiel from your parents, like, oh, you're super smart, don't let it go to waste. Um, love crime novels, was reading a lot of like detective mysteries, which led me to John Jay. Had a great time there, great experience there, but I knew being in the lab was not where my heart was, but I always wanted to be a teacher. Had a super love for math. Um, science was fun because it was hands-on, but math was really where my brain was. Um, and I started going to school for education. And on my career path of my master's in education, I came across my current mentor, who is also now my education coach at my job. Um, and she kind of re recommended me for this job. And literally within 48 hours, um, I was hired. It was a quick turnaround, uh, but definitely not something I regret doing. Not an email I regret not opening. I think it speaks a lot to the importance of um, networking and having mentors to help you along the way. 110%. If I never opened that email, if I never took that class, I wouldn't be where I am today. Right. And David? Can you repeat the question so I can? Yeah. Not, I, I don't want to drone on. How, um, what is your current position and how did you find out about like, your career path? How did you? decide to go to this? Um, so essentially what I do now, my, my full title is Scientist 2 Technical Marketing uh, for BASF, which is essentially just a really large chemical company. They, they have their hand in everything. Um, I, I guess to kind of quickly start from the beginning of how I got to this point, because this job is actually relatively new for me. In the beginning, I actually, through Ed, found um, sort of an internship at this big company, BSF. Um, when, uh, when I graduated, it was a really good lead into the industry. From there, I went into uh, some sort of hardcore biology, molecular biology. I really loved it. Um, became a genetic engineer there for about a year and a half. Um, and I actually really loved that as well. But um, at the beginning of last year, the writing was kind of on the wall for our department and we were going to be shut down. Really no through fault uh, of our own, but just through the economics of the time, the unfortunate truth is R&D gets cut pretty much immediately before anything else. And in a lot of cases, unfortunately. In, um, through my networking throughout the rest of the company, it's a very, uh, the, the way that the site works is very stacked. They have different disciplines on each floor. I had actually made friends with the head of global marketing for the pharmaceutical parts of the company. And when it looked like, you know, we were kind of draining, uh, kind of circling the toilet a little bit, she reached out to me thinking I would be uh, good for this other potential position. And I essentially ended up going for it once we were uh, kind of in demise. And I, I wanted to stay with the company uh, largely because um, one, they're already paying for my school. So I'm still in school. And um, also, you know, other you know, more, more realistic things like uh, the, the money is good and, and all these other things. And I know the place very well. So I kind of fell into this new pharmaceuticals thing, which has a lot of biopharma, but it's not, um, it's not exactly what I'm used to lab wise, but I would say really good takeaways are I get to learn about marketing because in R and D you don't always see the, the fruits of your labor and you don't really see how they change that into a product. How do you make science a product? 
Um, yeah, and uh, it's a whole new, more chemistry-based uh, work that I do now. I'll, I'll go more into detail, but that's how I got to where I am right now. Okay, so we have, I got a direct message from a student asking me about um, how you felt right before graduation. And their specific question is, how is the anxiety before graduation? <laughs> um if you had any maybe you were just excited and didn't have any anxiety so can you speak to that yeah sure um entering my final semester at john jay was like a rude awakening for me um i really didn't know what happened next you know when you graduate fifth grade you know you're going to middle school when you graduate middle school you go to high school high school to college and i had reached this like line and it was like oh no i don't know what happens next but i really really lived in the moment like that last semester is when i really got involved with csep i really got involved with my research um we went to the csep conference which was the highlight of my college career i'm so glad that erica and ed and dr prony talked me into doing csep and uh christy tammy who was my mentor before she had graduated like so glad they talked me into it because CSEP really was the highlight. Um, so approaching graduation, I was really like high on life. That's like the only way I could put it. It was like looming over me that the, what came next, I wasn't really sure, but I knew I wasn't done at John Jay yet. And I actually had went on to become a tutor in the MSRC for a year. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, right as graduation was looming, I was absolutely terrified. Um, I had, <laughs> I'd really put off applying for programs. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure why I, I did. I don't think I already applied for two or three. And uh, by the time I got to it, I, I'd done well, like, uh, you know, in, in my current degree, but I, I really had nowhere to go. I didn't get into any of them. So I was very freaked out. And um, like I said, I'm glad that um, Ed was there. I became, um, I started teaching lab for biochemistry. Uh, I liked that a lot. That was fun. So I had some avenues to go to stay in the field, but I was absolutely, absolutely terrified. Um, but, it, you know, grabbing every opportunity I could, I kept moving forward. I got more notoriety. I networked better. I built up my resume. Oh, a lot of blurry there. Uh, I built up my resume. Um, yeah, so yeah, definitely terrifying. I would say, you know, if, if you want to stay in this industry or, or in this field, definitely don't give up, you know. Thank you. Okay, so next question I have for you is, what factors helped you decide to pursue your current career path? Uh, that's a fun one. Um, so growing up, besides being so good in school, um, I'm actually a martial arts instructor on the side. I grew up doing Taekwondo. It's the largest like influencer in my life and really grounded me in who I am. And it's through the martial arts that I learned or discovered of how good of an educator I am. Where, you know, I started small, like tutoring, watching the class, helping the kids out, whatever. Um, and slowly like building into that role of instructor in, in, into leadership. And that's that coupled with my love for math and my understanding of numbers and just comfort in math is really what drove me forward to pursue education. I started in um, District 75, which is the district for um, severe disabilities, students with like severe learning disabilities, um, and physical disabilities and the like. And that gave me a really good foundation and understanding of how flawed the school system could be sometimes or how underrepresented students are. And I knew I needed to change that. I knew I needed to try because these kids have potential and somebody needs to stand up for them. Which led me to my job now at Mesa Charter where a school down in Bushwick with a lot of like underrepresented students. So it's a great place to start. Great. And David? Yeah, um, the simplest answer is I love science. Um, whenever, whatever I do, it always seems to involve science, even if it's, 
I, I definitely have a uh, more partiality towards biology. But yeah, if any little step or, or tumble, I know this is the general industry I want to be in. And if I'm not doing exactly what I like in the moment for me, I'm still getting a lot of good resources and a lot of good uh, experience that if I ever want to bring everything together, I have a potent resume to be able to do, you know, increasingly through the years, I could do more of whatever I really want to do, even if, um, you know, it's not exactly what I want to do right now. There's definitely aspects of my current job even that are new to me, but there's so many things I'm learning um, that I, I think I could be potent wherever I want to be and actually make a living in, uh, in this, in, in science, you know. Okay. So from both your answers like that, um, I got how important your interests and your values are. The things that are most important to you as you are determining what career you want to pursue after graduation. And so having determined that teaching is interesting to you, Brianna, and science was interesting to you, David, how did you prepare to enter this career path? Did you get the students this a stepwise view of what you did to get to where you are now? Uh, so like I said earlier, like I got into this position through unique circumstances, but um, after a year at tutoring at John Jay, my plan was to be the paraprofessional in District 75, which is like the teacher's assistant, so that I get exposure to the classroom, but at a smaller scale, because District 75 classrooms are also no bigger than, I would say, 10 kids to a room. Um, so I got a lot of hands-on experience with kids. We need different ways to really be an educator, like not just deliver content, but how to make the kids understand. Uh, my plan from there, obviously, was to go to Toro College for my master's in education. And then along the lines, um, I was in the fellowship for, um, it's like the power to teacher transition program. Um, it's actually where I was after PRISM. I had gone into like this accelerated program, but um, kind of lost space with that because it was just, it happened way too quickly and I wasn't ready for it. So I had to like stop, slow down and go through the traditional route. Um, and then through my master's with education, I landed my position now and I graduate in August. So it's hand in hand that I'm graduating and I'm still in the field. Thank you. Right. Oh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so what did you do to prepare to enter this career path? Did you do what? research? Did you do internships? Did you network? Like, what's up? What did you do? <laughs> definitely all of the above. Um, my, my path to where I am now was definitely super unique as well, um, just because I'd been through you know, all the disciplines, it seems. But when I got my new current position, I dug directly into the product line. Um, I dug directly into what, do, what tools do I need to succeed here? And then started building connections immediately um, throughout, you know, it's a global company, especially now my title um, in my position is more of a global position. Like I, I had meetings in Mumbai, not actually now, but um, I get to meet scientists from all over the world, which is super, super cool. So I dug into the product line. I started making those connections pretty immediately. Um, I dug into the science because it's a related but different discipline for me. Um, and I related it to kind of what I'm interested in and what I, what I want to learn on top of things that I kind of I need to learn. It would be really nice for a resume. So that, that's sort of it. But then in the beginning, everything started with um, research at John Jay is how I, I find to figure out my passions for. I like being in the lab, but I also really like talking. I found out as I developed through the lab and there are some times where you're like, man, I don't want to be on this bench. Everybody's outside playing in the sun. So I think this is really good for me because the more marketing aspects lets me talk about science with people. And also I have a probably, you know, good 50%, 40% of my time is spent in the lab. So finding that balance was, was key for me, but it was connections, the research, figuring out what I like, building a resume. Um, and then also needing to put everything together to succeed in my job. So I have even more opportunities going forward. Thank you. So um, definitely take advantage of all the opportunities that you 
see students um, that we send you. Um, even if you don't think that you'll be eligible, that you're eligible, just apply. Um, because when you do, you get to do fun things like what our panelists are doing. Okay, so next question. What are, what are some of the most rewarding aspects of your career path or position or both? Uh, rewards happen every day. Honestly, I work with children. Um, I work in high school, so students not much younger than all of you sitting here today. Um, but the most rewarding is when that light bulb goes off. Like you see that struggling kid and then all of a sudden that light bulb goes off, that aha moment happens. And you're like, yeah, okay, I really can do this. You know, being a teacher, especially now in the remote world, um, it's hard, it, it's really rough. And some days you don't feel like you're as effective as you could be, or you know you can be, but that aha moment really makes it, or that email from a student um, when you stay longer with them, or, we have um, a very good communication with parents at our school. It's a very open communication form. So even like that email from a parent or that text from a parent that their child came home or signed off and they were happy and they were enthusiastic and um, just enlightened, like bringing that good energy really is the most rewarding part of my position. Thank you. Uh, as far as rewarding, I kind of like hers better because uh, I, I remember teaching and that is super, it is it is really good if you actually really can get through to somebody. But um, I guess more, most, what makes me want to go to work um, is the new aspects of it. But I also, like I said, I love that it's an international job. Um, and it also reveals a whole side of science that I think a lot of people don't get to see, which is the, how do you, how do you monetize it to fund more science? So I, I mean, this may be a bit vague, but I like the international aspect. I like the, the, the coupling aspect of talking with people. And I like seeing a whole other side to science that, you know, granted is a little bit more political, but it's something that I don't think a lot of my colleagues have seen, uh, especially coming out of, you know, most of my friends are in academia. So the, it, it's, it's odd to see sort of the fruits of their labor, how it gets, gets back to them, if that makes any sense. Okay, and along those lines, what are some of the things that you dislike most about your position and why? Oh, yeah. So being a teacher, you probably all have teacher friends or you know somebody who is a teacher um, and you all have teachers at some point. And our job never ends. There is always something else to do. So for example, I set aside time to come talk to you guys today, which means that my lesson plan for tomorrow isn't done yet, right? So it gets pushed over. So definitely something that I don't like about the job is that it never ends. There's always something else to do. If I don't do it now, it has to be done later. Um, yeah, I think that would be it. It just never ends. I think we have a question. Is, is that the hand? I, I maybe the question is for you because I don't see it on my end. Oh, oh, it's actually oh, never mind. It was something else. Um, yes. So the worst part is the odd meeting times. It, it's global, so I, I'm up at you know six five. It's hard to schedule different continents for uh different times that's probably the worst part second part is i have more of a passion for bio and this is more of a chemistry based job which eh, maybe not as much for me okay now to switch gears um how has the COVID 19 pandemic affected your career and or trajectory your um position or your trajectory david mm, you already said a little bit about this um so if you could expand when you go, that would be good. So COVID, obviously teaching is an in-person thing. Uh, COVID made it all remote, which is why Zoom is part of my everyday. I like live and breathe on Zoom now. Um, but it also, besides the physical aspect of not being in person and 
trying to teach algebra two and parabolas and factoring virtually, which is a problem in itself. Um, it's made us think about education differently. So I haven't used this time to think negatively about the impact, but more of the positive of how education can now be like reformed, how a traditional worksheet with 20 problems is now not effective anymore. Like, what can I do with that worksheet instead? Um, it also has taught me so much about different types of modifications and differentiation and the needs of literally every student, um, not just the general lump of students sitting in front of me. Um, it's also taught me to use like different platforms and time management and a lot, like there's a lot of good that's come out of teaching remotely that I'm so excited to take back into the building next year. That's awesome. Hmm. How are you? Um, my, like I said before, um, it kind of put the nail in the coffin for my last uh, R&D spot, which I still think the company sorely misses. They, they let about 25 people go. A PhD and uh, a master's scientist in biology. It was, I, I still think it was a mistake, even if I was also personally affected, but I still think it was a mistake for the company. Um, but other than that, in this new position, my job is like 15 to 20% travel. And like I said, because we're global, uh, we're, we're kind of ahead of all the other parts of the world. And there's a lot of road shows and stuff that I should be going to. I've never actually left the US yet. And to have, you know, to get to travel to some of these places and talk with scientists um, at, a, at a frequency on, especially on not my dime, uh, it's something I'm sorely missing. It was a kind of another big draw for this position. Um, yeah, the, the the lack of being able to travel uh, to some of these really cool places, uh, it, it stings. Okay, so moving on to work-life balance. What are some of the ways that you separate your career and your personal life or achieve this work-life balance that you may be looking for? Oh, that's a fun one. As a teacher, like I said, the work never ends. So it's really, really important to set those boundaries. Um, you really need to learn what you're able to do, like what is your personal bandwidth. Um, so last year was my first year teaching and that boundary did not exist. Um, but this year, especially being remote and, um, you know, battling normal everyday things, um, it was really important to find that balance. And what I like the most about my job is that we teach in a co part which means I always have another teacher with me. And in the Algebra 2 course, I kind of could split the work. So I could make the lesson, my co-teacher could make like the quiz. Um, my co-teacher could grade and I could like respond to emails. Um, but we set a hard limit on ourselves that one weekend day so either Saturday or Sunday is a no work day. Like you don't open your laptop, you don't answer your emails because that day is for you. Errands, doctor's appointments, whatever the case may be. Um, and I also try to keep, get my work done by five o'clock or like start wrapping up at 4.30 to close laptop at five. Um, and if I do have to work late, like I do have a hard deadline for grading or a hard deadline for a lesson, um, I pick one day a week to work like super late so that I could have Friday be offline by three and still enjoy some sunlight and then have one day off on the weekend. It's really just learning your schedule and using your planner. That is your best friend. Okay. Um, how about you, Zoe? It's very, very uh, difficult more now so than uh, non-COVID times. I'm either here in my home office or I'm going to be inside the actual office. Uh, it's difficult. I'm blessed to have flex scheduling. I, I pretty much make my own schedule. I, but um, because I take meetings at weird times on weekends, I, work phone goes off, everything is away. If for whatever reason, I really need to prepare for something. I'll do it. But I try to be out of this particular room and away from my office uh, whenever possible. But it's definitely very hard during COVID. Yeah, um, definitely. I think everybody can relate to that. Um, 
All right, we have three questions left. The first one of the three is, can you describe some of the challenges you faced and overcame to continue along this career path? Um, I faced a lot of my challenges, I think at home, more so than within the college, within the professional realm. Uh, I grew up in a family of teachers and a family of educators and they always were like, we want better for you. Don't follow our footsteps, um, which is why, which what led me to forensics. And I was like, oh, maybe we'll see how this works out. Growing up, I always wanted to be a doctor. So I was like, yeah, let's try the science thing out. Like I said, great time. I loved every minute of my four years at John Jay. I made so many of my best friends from John Jay who I still talk to. So many great relationships came out of it but my heart wasn't in it. Um, so it was the biggest challenge was trying to get my family to see that my heart just wasn't there and it was being an educator. Um, so then when I got on this job last year, um, I hate change, don't do well with change. So, you know, coming into a position within 48 hours um, and then learning how to be a teacher because they don't teach you how to be a teacher, kind of got to figure that out you know, coming home and struggling and like being super stressed out, lots of anxiety about, is this really what I want? Um, added to that challenge of my family being like, oh yeah, no, I don't think this is you. But then this year, um, I kind of got to turn that around and be like, haha, in your face. Like I taught algebra to remotely to students who are underrepresented, students who are coming in at lower grade levels and look at what I've done, you know? So it, it was rewarding, but it was really hard to get them on board with me. Um, yeah, I think the hardest thing is to, uh, for me, it's uncertainty uh, to a degree. So lost my, my first real job in science and then I got a new one in a completely different discipline. I had to learn a lot of things that I, I just had no experience with, and I had to be good at them if I wanted to keep the job or succeed in that role. So I think uncertainty is always there. Um, you always have complexes about whether or not you're smart enough to be here, whether or not you deserve to be working where you are. So um, getting just laid off and then coming into new stuff was a big undertaking for me mentally. Um, but I had, you know, I had a pretty good uh, background in talks from John Jay, so I leveraged that for pharma to the best degree that I could. I had a lot of, uh, a lot of grit, and I wanted to prove myself. A thing that people don't tend to use, and I think is a shame, <clears throat> when you have all this uncertainty, you don't know what you're doing in a new position. People don't use their coworkers. I, I feel like I learn just as much from my coworkers as I do flipping through a book, you know, because. Uh, I work with right now a guy who's been doing this type of work for 30 years. He's a treasure trove of I've done everything. Um, additionally, good mentorship. Um, like I said, my now boss reached out to me just because uh, she'd, she'd seen my work and some other presentations I've done. And she liked my personality, thought I could be a fit for this position. She is a huge advocate for me. She teaches me all the things I need to know to get me into the next role. She lays out a development uh, plan for me uh, with the skills that I have. So I would say, um, you know, be certain in yourself. You, you could definitely do it uh, with enough grit and determination, even if it's something new. And utilize your coworkers and the people around you, not the ones that are jerks, but um, you'll find some of those. But usually they're very well knowledge in, uh, in, what, in what you're doing if it's new. And hopefully you have a good boss too. That's not always a guarantee, honestly. Yeah, so um, definitely working hard towards overcoming these um, challenges and showing yourself that you can do it and showing others that you can do it is um, important in any career. And it's something I got from both of you. Um, so what are the next steps in your career path? Uh, so before I answer that, I just wanna like piggyback off David for a second. It is really important, I think, no matter what field you, come into is to utilize your mentor or find a mentor, uh, whether it is a coworker who's been in that field forever or just somebody you're confident and comfortable talking with at your job or 
even in within prism you know finding somebody who you're confident with and you're comfortable with uh, mentors take you a really long way um so i just wanted to plug that before and then uh next steps um i know my job goes beyond the classroom i know being a teacher is not where i land in my career um, but I do want to enjoy my time being a teacher. I don't want to rush out of that anytime soon. Uh, right now, I'm in a co-taught position. Like I said, I have a co-teacher. We are equal partners in the classroom. But um, like immediate next steps is I can't wait to have my own classroom, be a solo teacher, um, trying to get a feel for what it is to learn how to swim by yourself. Um, a dream would be to teach AP calculus like that's where my heart lives and breathes. Um, that's always been a dream of mine. But um, beyond education, I really do want to go up into administration. Because like I said earlier, I want to make changes in education, I want to make sure all students are represented, all disabilities are accounted mm -hmm. for, and all students are just heard and felt safe and supported in their classrooms. And to do that, I have to move up into administration. Uh, my immediate next steps are I want to finish my master's. I'll be done next year. Um, I think that'll be a really good uh, bolster for my resume and it'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll feel, I think it'll be a really good um, point for me that I, I was able to get through grad school and I have a budding career now next to it. As far as the career is concerned, um, I'm still in the first year of this job. I, I want to see a little bit more of what it's like without having to deal with COVID while doing this job. Um, you know, because there's some aspects I don't like and some aspects I do. But right now I have a, you know, I have a really good boss, a good mentor that uh, sees a lot of potential in me. So it's uh, proceeding both uh, with both. I, I want to continue with my education. I'm going to continue in my, in my next steps here. And maybe when I feel that I um, have the capital and the, um, you know, the, the academic backing to maybe branch out and do something a little bit more uh, crazy, like maybe start my own biotech company one day, um, now that I have all this experience and what I could do and some, some friends, or if I don't want to do that, maybe, uh, I don't know, go back into academia at some point, probably not that one. But in, in the meantime, uh, yeah, continue on this road, see what it's like without COVID, continue to learn from my mentors and uh, finish up my master's is, is gonna be a big point for me, especially with that imposter syndrome, right? Which I think everybody on this call has probably felt at some point. So I have an additional question. Um, what do you, what would you tell a student who is looking for a mentor that they should do when they are cultivating this relationship with a potential mentor? Um, I'm going to follow up with a clarifying question. A mentor within PRISM for research research, or a mentor within our career? A, like a mentor in general, whether it's like in PRISM or it's a uh, outside of PRISM, but still John Jay, or it's completely outside of John Jay, um, anything. It could be any mentor. Okay, so throughout my life, I've had mentors in every discipline I've been in. So at martial arts, I had my instructor who literally from day one tucked me under his wing and showed me the ropes and really made me who I am today. Um, He's still a big mentor to me today. He's still a person I enjoy having conversations with. Um, but moving up in life at John Jay, I have to say, I didn't really have like a pinpoint mentor that I could like place a name to, but I had so many people who I was comfortable talking with. If it was classes and what professors should I take and how do I manage my time, there was one person. If it was, oh man, I just need to vent, it's been a stressful week and I'm like bubbling inside, you know, I had somebody else. Um, so many familiar faces. When it comes to a mentor, it's really somebody who understands you and understands your goal. Um, and they are also gonna be playing devil's advocate. They're always gonna throw the what if, they're always gonna play the other side of the spectrum to make you think about all your options. 
they may not be talking you out of it, but they may make you think deeper about really what you want to do and how to get you there best. Um, so a mentor is just somebody you trust and feel confident talking to with, and you understand that they're not trying to hurt you, even if it seems like they're pushing back. Yeah, I think that's really well said. Um, this, you're never going to have just one mentor in a lot of cases. There's usually many mentors throughout your life in different aspects. Um, the best that I find for me personally is somebody that's knowledgeable in what you're actually trying to learn. I think that's super huge because whatever mistake you keep making, they've probably made a billion times and they know how to fix it. Um, the other thing is, I think some of the more successful mentorships I had is just personality. Um, sometimes the personalities don't mesh well with the potential mentor, even though they may know stuff. Yeah, if it's not coming across clearly, if there's any anger, if they are, you know, they don't particularly care about you, if there's like a forced mentorship, you know, um, that, that doesn't usually end very well. Um, so I think when I'm looking for a, a mentor, I'm looking for that experience. I'm looking for someone who actually cares about my development genuinely. And, and uh, I'm also maybe looking for personalities that kind of match, but um, it's hard to find the trifecta there. But I, I, you know, I've been lucky enough to find that uh, quite a few times. Your, your mentor should also be somebody that, like she said, will, will challenge you. And, um, you know, that's, that's a fantastic thing. And also you could talk with them, I think as a person is, is pretty valuable. That, that, that to me is a mentor. Yeah. And that speaks to um, the importance of building a mentoring team. You're not going to get the same thing from everybody and not everybody will be everything to you. So it's important for you to have a group of people that will help you get to where you want to go. And with that, I have the last question for me. And if students have any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. The last question is, what advice would you give a student that is interested in pursuing your career path? Um, entering the field of education is not an easy one. There really needs to be a hard driving passion to do it. Um, because like I said earlier, your job never ends. Um, and I feel that educators make the biggest impact on students, on children, because you're literally teaching them what they need to know in life. Um, yes, parents have a play in that. Um, yes, mentors have a play in that. Everybody has a play in that, but you're with your teacher more than you're with anybody else if you go time by time, minute by minute. Um, and the way you approach a child, the way you speak to a child the way you interact with them can have major, you know, you could, you have a, the opportunity to make a big impact on them. Um, so know what you're getting into. It's not an easy field to get into. There's going to be a lot of pushback. Um, you know, you have your education coaches, you have your APs, you have your principal, you have parents. There's a lot of people to answer to, but also, let your personality show. Like last year, year one, I tried to be very by the book and very rigid and very like robotic type teacher, but that wasn't me. I am more like, not your buddy, but I'm also like the chiller teacher. Like, yeah, if I see you in the hall, we could chit chat for a minute. If I see you at the deli across the street, I'm not gonna pretend I don't know you. Yeah, I'm gonna let your parents know the good and the bad. Um, so I would literally, yeah, that's definitely it. Know what you're getting into. It's not going to be easy, but it is extremely rewarding. Um, network. Networking is super important. I, I have most of my key um, starting points from just knowing people in the right situations. Please continue to network, keep your grades up, have a good background in science understand what steps you need to take to get to where you want to be. They may be more academic driven, it may be more industry driven, but um, you know, the steps are usually pretty laid out, but continue to know people in there that will get you a foot in the door. And then from there, you can prove through your background and through your hard work that you deserve to be there. 
And from there, who knows, you, you can go even beyond what your original goal was. So I always stress networking, you build a LinkedIn. In the meantime, build your academics, keep adding to your resume, uh, get, that, get that background down. But the, the biggest thing is keep networking, talk with people. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.